Hi, welcome to another Quilting from the Heartland program. I'm Charlene Jorgensen, and today we're going to work with the Dresden plate and the grandmother's fan. There are many options that you have to choose from when working with this design, and before we start cutting today, I'd like to share those options with you. The first quilt that we're looking at is made with fans sitting on point and they are unfolded in a diagonal uh, formation. Between each of these rows of fans you'll see that there is a meandering feather design which is outlined uh, to the feather with a stippling design. The outside edge of this quilt is finished off with the same fabric that was used to create those fans which happened to be a border print and then the very outside edge was finished off with prairie points. The next quilt that I'm going to show you has the same fan, only they're unfolded to create a square that sits on point in the center of the quilt. It, it created a very unique uh, medallion design. Also in the very center of this quilt you'll see that there is a wreath of feathers surrounded with a stippling design. Actually it, it outlines right up to the feather which enhanced the uh, quilting design very much. Then to square off this quilt we dropped a fan in each of the corners and then surrounding the whole outside edge you'll see that the border print was repeated and then the pattern shapes that we use today uh, can be flip-flopped to create this interesting border design. The next quilt that we're looking at has a totally different mood when you look at it. You'll see that solid petals have been dropped on a floral background. And because I was able to select the same portion of fabric every time to put in the center, you'll see that each center in this plate is the same. The blocks are 12 inch squares separated by cornerstones and sashing. The next quilt uh, that we're going to look at has fans arranged on a floral background. The petals are solid pastels and the arrangement is different than the other ones that I showed you. We experiment with a, with a lot of different arrangements and we decided to go with this one. The outside edge of this quilt is finished different than the other ones that we looked at. You'll see that there is a border of pr uh, pink and then there's a cornerstone on each uh, corner of this border. And quilted in the pink area you'll see a continuous heart uh, in the design. Outside of that border you'll see that the black floral print was repeated and then for a different ending on this quilt, the bottom, each of the corners has a fan for a nice ending to this quilt. Well, the one that we're working on today is, ma is made with a different collection of fabrics. It's reproduction prints from the 30s. I liked working with this grouping of fabrics because it reminded me of some of Grandma's aprons when I was a child. The plates are quilted with a nylon thread. It's a continuous curve uh, quilting and the center of each of these plates has an orange peel design in them. Each of these blocks are separated again with cornerstones and sashing and we repeated the same fabric that was used for the sashing in one of the uh, borders on the outside edge. You'll notice that we have used, uh, introduced a new fabric in the border, which happened to be a solid blue that, that went with all of the other fabrics that were used. And uh, in this area, we used a hand-guided quilting machine to quilt in some tulips. And then on the outside edge, we have uh, prairie points to finish off this quilt. The next quilt that we're looking at is a miniature version of the one that I just shared with you and I wanted to show you them side by side so that you could get an idea of how they compare in size. There is the same number of blocks in this quilt and all of the cutting and sewing techniques are the same when making either of these sizes. The next quilt shows you of what can be done if you choose not to make Dresden plates with the pattern shape. We call this a tumbler design. It is a scrap looking quilt because all of the fabrics used in this quilt uh, aren't in a specific order. They are just sewn together at random. 
You can also make just a pillow top when working with this design. Well, now that you know that you have all these different things that you can make with this pattern, let's start uh, cutting some pieces. I do want to mention that you need to pre-wash all of your fabric with a soap that has no bleaching additives in it. Also, this soap has, is biodegradable, so it, it makes it a very nice one to use. When starting to sew, make sure that you have ironed all of your fabric so that it lays nice and flat. And ahead of time, I have layered three uh, prints on top of each other, and we will be straightening all three of them at one time. Then uh, allow yourself plenty of room so that you can turn the board when you're cutting, and line up the straight edge of the ruler with the folded edge of the fabric. And we will be using a rotary cutter to do all of our cutting today. I prefer to do that because I find that I have more precision. Uh, hold your uh, hand down on the ruler so that it doesn't slide when you're cutting. And also I want to point out that I have uh, grips on the back side of the ruler so that it's not going to move. And just follow the edge of the ruler with a rotary cutter. And like I said, we'll be straightening all three edges of the fabric at one time. And then take the time to close the blade on the cutter so that you don't cut yourself. And just let the fabric then ride along as you turn the board. Now there are three pattern shapes uh, that, that we will be working with. Actually, we'll only be using two of them in the set. And the one that we will be cutting today is the one with the two straight edges. And when looking at the petals in the Dresden plate, one would think that it would be the shape with the point that we might use. But in fact, in reality, it is the one with the two straight edges. Lay the template down on top of the ruler, and you'll see how wide you need to cut the strips and light up the straight edge of the template with the straightened edge of the fabric. And again, we will cut all three fabrics at one time. And just follow the edge of the ruler uh, with the rotary cutter. After you get the strips cut, then I'm going to transport them up onto a smaller mat board base. I do that because it's easier to, to turn my work as I'm cutting. And there are two colors to the mat board, and, and when I'm working with the lighter fabric, I like to work on the dark side. Place the pattern shape on top of the cut strips and line up the straight edge on both sides. And notice that we'll, I'll put it in a position so that it's easy for me to work. Just before you start to cut, then open up uh, the blade or expose the blade on the cutter and let the fabric ride along each time you turn the board. And you will have absolutely no fabric waste when cutting it this way. And notice how we just flip-flop the template, working your way across the strips, and the only waste that you have is that little bit that you cut off at the very beginning. After you get all of the uh, different fabrics cut, and I'd like to show you the collection of fabrics that we're working with a little closer today. See all the different prints that we have to choose from? And after you get a little bit of each of those cut, then you might find it helpful to store the pieces in, a, in a, some kind of a container so that you can keep them organized until you're ready to start sewing at the sewing machine. There's one more piece that we need to cut before starting to talk about sewing, and that's the circle that goes in the center of each of the blocks. Before cutting that circle, I like to work with four inch squares uh, because it's easier to handle. So I'm going to cut, I have first cut the fabric four inches wide, and now I'm going to fracture it again into four inch uh, squares. And then we will move those little squares up on top of a smaller board so that it's easy to turn as we work our way around. Place the circle then that's going to be used in the center, right in the center of those squares, and make it uh, easy uh, for you to turn. Follow the edge of that 
template then with the rotary cutter and we will be making shortcuts turning each time we've completed cutting. Now people would say that you know this wouldn't be possible to cut a circle out with a rotary cutter but you'll see how easy it is just following the edge and making short little cuts as you go. Now I'm cutting four at a time as I work my way around that circle and that's how easy that was to do. And remember I talked about in one of the quilts I was able to center a specific part of the fabric in the center of each Dresden and that was because I could see through the pattern shape and I could pick that certain part of the fabric as I was working. I guess we're done cutting. Oh, I know it. I need to talk a little bit about the fabric that was used in the black quilts that we looked at in the beginning. Remember I said that the petals were cut out of the same part of the fabric every time? For, the, for those uh, fans, we used a border print. And then I placed the template down on the same part of the fabric every time. And after you've cut the first one, then you probably would want to mark some place on that uh, template so that you could place it in the same place every time. And then when you repeat those petals over and over again, that's when you get that de delicate looking design. I like to work on a flannel board when putting any of my quilts together. And even though we are working with a collection of Aunt Grace's fabric and we want it to look like a scrap quilt, I, I still take the time to arrange all my fabrics uh, in the order that I want them before starting to sew. So let's take the flannel board with us and let's go to the sewing machine and start sewing. So all of the seams today with a scant fourth inch seam allowance to make up for the amount of fabric that's used in the seam line and use a cotton thread to match the fabrics for strength as well as care. The first thing that you need to do when sewing uh, the pieces together today is we will be folding them in half and we will chain sew the pieces together. Just fold them down the center, matching up the edge over here, and chain sew 12 for each uh, Dresden plate that you're going to make. Now, if you're only going to do a fan, of course, you only need three for each fan. And just follow uh, along until, or sew as many as, until you have 12. Notice that I started on the cut edge when I put the, uh, sewed the seam across here instead of the folded edge. And I find that that's easier uh, to keep the edges straight and to keep uh, the petals looking nicer. And just uh, continue on chain sewing until you have completely sewn 12 of the pieces. And I won't take the time to chain sew that many but chain sew, sewing means that you don't cut the thread between each of the pieces and that will save a lot of thread as well as time. Then after you have all 12 of them chain sewn, take the time to press them in half. And if you keep your ironing board close to you, you'll be more apt to do that. There's another reason why we uh, iron them before turning the petals over and I'll show you that in a little bit. You Clip then the threads between each of the pieces and before turning them, clip off the little corner and that removes the bulk that would be left in the corner and we'll just turn it inside out and now you'll see why we needed to press that crease in there. We will match the seam line with the crease that we made ahead of time with the iron and that will assure you that your point will be uh, equal there will be equal amounts on both sides of that seam. And then take the time to press it and you'll have perfect petals. And you would do that with all 12 of the pieces that go into that plate. After you have all of these sewn like this, then, you no then start to chain sew those together by twos. And when putting those together, you probably will have taken the time to go back to the flannel board and arrange them in the order that you want them to go together. 
And when sewing these together, put them right sides together again and start sewing at the wide end instead of the narrow end. So sew from here to here. And again, don't back stitch because that will create bulk up here. A little bit later, we will be sewing over that seam. It will be secure enough without the back stitching. So chain sew them by twos first, and then you will start to sew them together into fours. And that's what we'll do next. Place them right sides together and match up the top end and the bottom end. And I like to sew with an open toe foot because I have an unobstructed view then of what's happening in front of my needle. Just guide the fabric with the stiletto in front of the presser foot and continue sewing until you have all 12 of them connected together. And this brings us to this part of the design. After you have all 12 of them sewn together, you create the completed circle. And when I turn it over, you'll see what the back side looks like. I have pressed all of the seams open, and each one of these have been pressed down. Now, when we put this on the uh, square, or when we attach it to the yellow background, each of these seams, will, we will come across each of these intersections, so you don't have to worry about them uh, coming apart. Ahead of time, I have found the center of the square we're going to attach it to. This happens to be a 12 and a half inch square when we cut it out. And to identify uh, the four equal parts, we have folded it in half in both directions and pressed a crease in, uh, in each direction. Then to center the Dresden on the uh, square, you can do it a couple of different ways. You can cent uh, center the seam line with the seam that you made in all four corners, or you can center one of the points on the crease, whichever, whichever way that you like to do it uh, will be fine. Then after you have got it to that point, secure it in place with a pin. And you might want to measure the distance from all four sides to make sure that you have it on there uh, equal distance. Then after you have done that, just secure it in place with straight pins, and we will be ready for the next step. We will be doing all of the, we will attach it with uh, a, a, a straight seam on the sewing machine. We will, won't have to attach it with any hand sewing at all. Okay, now let's talk about the center that goes into this design before we continue any farther. Get this on here flat before we uh, continue on. Okay, the circle that we cut out for the center, ahead of time we have put a running stitch around the outside edge of that, and that's an eighth of an inch from the edge. And the closer you put your running stitch, the easier it will be to maintain that circle in the center. We have a square, uh, square a circle out of a heavier paper uh, cut out that, has, that is one fourth inch smaller in size than the circle that the yellow fabric is. And we will draw up this string to, to go around that circle. And we'll have to adjust it here just a little bit. See how you can pull up that fabric? And then we will press it on both sides. Now you can tie a knot if you want to uh, with both fabrics, uh, with this end and that one, or just hold your thumb on it while you're pressing it. And that's what I guess I like to do. I like to just hold my thumb over the thread that draws it up and then press it. Uh, with the iron, and that'll hold it in place. Then place that circle on top of the Dresden plate with the cardboard still in, inside. Now, some of you might like to take it out, but I like to, to leave it in. And then I pin that in place, centering it over the center. And just sneak your pins 
along the outside edge. Now notice I have the cardboard in there. We have it attached to the back. Let's see, get it pinned down there a little bit. See, we're just holding it in place uh, with the pins. Put about, oh, five or six pins in, just enough to hold it in place. Another way that you could hold this circle in place would be to use a glue stick. That might work uh, also. Now you can either hand applique this circle on, or you can use a hemming stitch on your sewing machine. You might even want to use a nylon thread. Uh, or a contrasting thread, depending on if you want the design to show off or not. If you are going to use uh, a nylon thread and the hemming stitch, then you would just dial your machine to, uh, to the hemming stitch. We'll use this one right here. And it'll make like four stitches, and then it'll pop over and catch the edge of the circle that we're trying to attach. See how it catches one stitch, and then go a couple more, and then it pops over and catches it again. Now if you used a nylon thread, of course that wouldn't show. And you would just guide your fabric, uh, moving it in a circle as you sew along. So you see you don't have to do any hand sewing if you don't want to. Then when you're uh, attaching the outside edge, of the Dresden to the square. That's just as easy. We'll use a straight stitch when we're doing that. And again, you might want to switch to a nylon thread when doing this. We have a circle cut the same size as, as the circle that we cut out the centers with. Only this is out of paper instead of um, cardboard. Now we're going to place that paper over the petals and match up the intersection out here with the edge of the paper. And we're going to follow along the edge of that paper when sewing this seam. And our points will be attached and they will have another dimension. Actually, they will have the prairie point uh, appearance to them. And this is what gets quilters excited everywhere about when they find out that they don't have to do any hand sewing when making this whole quilt. And then just readjust that paper to the next uh, petal of the Dresden plate. Uh, notice too that I had the needle down when I decided to pivot there. I forgot to tell you that. Then drop your presser foot again and follow the edge of the paper and repeat this process until you have gone all the way around that Dresden plate. And when you do uh, use a paper like this, you won't have any pencil marks that you need to remove uh, after you are done sewing. Then after you have made all of the blocks that you want, and of course you can alter the size of the quilt with the number of blocks that you made. I showed you something as small as a pillow top, or you can make a wall quilt like I showed you, or go all the way to a queen size quilt. Then you can decide if you want to separate the squares with sashing and cornerstones, like I have here, or you can uh, use alternate blocks. Either way would be fine. Now in this particular design, I've decided to use sashing and cornerstones. And ahead of time, we have some blocks already uh, to that point, and I'll show you how we will do that. We have the blocks already separated with sashing going in this direction, and the, sa and the strips that go in the opposite direction are already uh, prepared ahead of time. And when you look at the back side of this, you'll see that the seams on the cornerstones have been ironed towards the inside of that square. And the same is true out here. Now when sewing this seam together, it's going to be real easy. I won't even have to pin it together because those seams will just lock in place because the seam allowance on the bottom is going one direction and on the top it's going in another direction. And when sewing that seam then, 
we'll just uh, drop the presser foot again and with a scant fourth inch seam allowance sew the blocks together. But we have to adjust our seam allowance so that we have that correct seam allowance. It's very easy uh, to adjust the seam allowance if you have a computer machine and you can just dial in that correct seam allowance. And now when I get to that intersection where I have the seams going in opposite directions, I will hold it down in front of the presser foot with a stiletto. And that will give me the perfect uh, corners on the other side. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed watching the Dresden plate and the grandmother's fan go together today.